today I've come to my secret spot, a reasonably dark area in Northern California. And tonight I'm going to try to see M51, the famous Whirlpool Galaxy, with my naked eye, with a pair of binoculars, more likely this pair of 15 by 70s on a tripod, with a small telescope, this 102 millimeter stellar view refractor, and with a medium sized telescope, this 203 millimeter Meech McCassegrain. Hello, I'm Sula. Welcome to my program, Sula's Big Adventures. I'm sorry I haven't made any videos lately, but I've been very sick with COVID. I managed not to get COVID for the entire three years of the pandemic. And as soon as the World Health Organization declared the pandemic over, I contracted COVID. I'm finally feeling better. And so today I'm making this video about M51 the Whirlpool Galaxy. Why the Whirlpool Galaxy? Well, while I was sick, I was perusing some of my old videos and I came across this one where I said that M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, is a naked eye object. Honestly, I have no idea why I said that, but it prompted me to make this video and find out what is really needed to see the Whirlpool Galaxy. And can you see it with your naked eye? M51, or Messier 51, also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, can be found in the constellation Canis Venatici, although it's very close to the Big Dipper. And finding the Big Dipper is the best way to find M51. Locate the last star in the handle of the Big Dipper, Alcade, and it's three and a half degrees southwest of Alcade, and that's where you'll find the Whirlpool Galaxy. As Stephen Tonkin says, think of a big L made by drawing a line from Mizar to Alcade, and then a line from Alcade there, making the bottom of the L, and M51 lies at the toe of that line. The Whirlpool Galaxy is an interacting grand design spiral galaxy. It's called that because of its long spiral arms, like a large spiral staircase. And those arms are full of hydrogen gas and dust, and it's where the gas is compressed into new stars. It was discovered in 1773 by Charles Messier, although he did not know it was a galaxy. He thought it was a nebula, and it wasn't determined to be a galaxy until around 1924, Edwin Hubble started studying Cepheid variables that showed that objects previously thought to be nebulae were too far away from us to be part of the Milky Way galaxy, and hence they were other galaxies. The Whirlpool galaxy was the first to be classified as a spiral galaxy. It's 31 million light years away and its apparent magnitude is 8.4, which is your first clue about whether it's a naked eye object. Most people can only see objects in the night sky up to about magnitude 6 or 6.5, and even then only under favorable conditions. When most people say M51, they're usually referring to the spiral galaxy and its smaller companion, galaxy NGC 5195 which was discovered later by Pierre Michin in 1781. The best time to view M51 is the end of November through the end of May. It's getting toward the end of the ideal time to view M51, so tonight when it gets dark, I'll take a sky quality measurement and I'll show you the darkness of the sky here, but I think it's Bortle 3 and I'll find out if I can see it with the naked eye, with 15 by 70 binoculars, a 102 millimeter telescope, and a 203 millimeter telescope. So I'll be back when it gets dark, and 
we'll check out M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. There's Venus. While waiting for it to get a little darker to look at the Whirlpool Galaxy, I just looked at Venus in my 8-inch McCassegrain, and it's in its quarter phase. Very beautiful, very cool. Check it out. To find M51, find the Big Dipper. Go to the last star, Alcade, in the handle. And draw a line from Mizar to Alcade. And that is going to make the long line of an L and then the short line from Alcade, three and a half degrees, will put you at M51. Now let's see if I can see it with the naked eye. No, I cannot see it. And I did look longer than that before I turned on this red light and my eyes were nice and dark adapted. I can't see it. I think maybe I said it was naked eye because maybe I hallucinated and thought I saw it naked eye one time, but I don't think so. At 8.4, that's pretty tough. If anyone out there has seen M51 naked eye, please let me know and tell me where you went to see it. Right now I'm in a Bortle 3. I took a sky quality measurement and it was 21.07, so it's pretty dark. And it's also very much dependent on the transparency. The key to seeing M51, and indeed any galaxy, is to go out on a clear, dark night with no moon. Let your eyes get nice and dark adapted. And then look for it. You can see it with binoculars, according to David Levy and Stephen Tonkin and Wikipedia, you can see M51 with a pair of binoculars. Probably should be 70 millimeters, I think. Now I'm going to look with my binoculars and see if I can see it. I looked with my 10 by 42 binoculars, handheld, because uh, they don't take an adapter, and I couldn't see it. So now I'm looking with a pair of 15 by 70 binoculars. These binoculars are so cheap. I looked at Venus and Venus was green and had a red outline. Anyway, it's tough to see M51 right now with binoculars because it's almost at the zenith. And so I have to hold it like this to even get it on there. But I did see it. I mean, it's nothing to write home about in a pair of binoculars. I ain't gonna lie to you. It just looks like a a patch. It's a very dim, small patch. And so, yes, you can see it with binoculars. Use 15 by 70 or something similar because uh, it's pretty hard. Okay, now let's see if we can see it in a small telescope. This is the small telescope I'll be using, my StellarView 102 millimeter refractor. <clears throat> yes, I can see it. I've seen it before in this telescope. And it looks very nice. It looks like two donuts stacked on top of each other. Now, if you want to make out the spiral arms, you need a big telescope, six inches or bigger. So now, let's go to my medium-sized telescope, an eight-inch schmidt cassegrain Okay, now I have it in my eight-inch telescope. That's 203 millimeters. And... I can see it. It looks like two donuts stacked on top of each other. I can see a little more detail with this bigger aperture telescope. And I 
We'll be able to see even more when I put in this 10 millimeter Teleview Ethos. So let me put that on and see if I can see the spiral arms. Yes, I can see the spiral arms. It's very beautiful. And it's the kind of thing that you should study for a long time and sketch it too, which I will do, but not right now. <laughs> okay, so it helps to look at M51 on a clear, dark night. That is the most important factor. Go to a dark sky site. Galaxies are hard. And if there's any light pollution, it's going to wash them out. If there's a moon out, it's going to wash it out. And so go out on a clear, dark night, no moon, and use the biggest aperture telescope you have. You can see it with binoculars, but you're not going to make out any kind of detail on it. And no, you cannot see it with the naked eye. I apologize sincerely for saying such a ludicrous thing. <laughs> so that's it for Observing M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. To summarize, no, you cannot see it with your naked eye. Yes, you can see it with binoculars, but you won't be able to make out any structure. And if you want to see the spiral arms, you need to have a very large telescope, probably 10 inches or bigger and you need to go to a dark sky site and go out on a clear moonless night with good transparency. That's it for now. I'll see you soon. Until then, dark skies forever. Sula signing off.